Welcome back. Welcome back. You man, Dominic K in here, of course, the Dominic K show.com on fire dash tv.com. We're talking about this funk flex, Pete Rock, back and forth, uh, Conway the Machine, and a lot of people, I don't know, a lot of rappers uh, have got to understand something, right? You got to understand something. A DJ does not have to play your record. Right, DJ don't have to play your record. A lot of times, artists feel like DJs have to play their music. Like if you, you ain't playing my music, then you you're not keeping it real. You're not you're not real hip hop. And and so, uh, Conway the the machine, a rapper out of uh, Buffalo, uh, who uh, Pete Rock has produced some music for, he, he's frustrated. And I understand the frustration. I understand rappers wanting DJs to play their music. But we are in the time of the internet. You don't have to have a DJ play your music in order for it to pop. See, a lot of times artists don't want to do the work that's necessary. And it's not the same work that we had to do back in the day. See, back in the day, you had to beat the streets. You had to have a street team. You had to go to clubs. You had to go to record stores. You had to, uh, you know, pass out flyers and and CDs and, and, and all that kind of stuff. And now they have to do a different level of work and they don't want to do the work. The work is uh, predominantly online, but then a lot of times they don't want to take the time to understand how to market, how to market themselves. So there's this beef between Pete Rock, legendary Pete Rock and Funk Flex, right? Let me get this popper stopper on here. This is a popper stopper, right? Popper stopper. And um, so this beef started, uh, Conway the Machine, the rapper, had a, a, a IG live. And so he calls out Funk Flex, you know. And, and we've heard this, we've heard this cr- criticism of Funk Flex in the past. Oh, he ain't keeping it real. He's too old. He's this, he's that, right? And and here's my my advice, right? He's in that slot. He's been in that slot for a long time. Been in that slot since the 90s. If somebody wants the spot, then take the spot. He ain't going to give it up. He ain't going to just, just one day just walk away. You know, you got to get him out the slot. And the reason why Funk Flex has been able to be consistently in a prime slot for so long in the number one market in the country is because he evolves. He, he, he's, he, he stays current. He stays current. We have a rapper like Snoop Dogg, right? Snoop Dogg. Let's look at Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg has had records since the nineties. He's been a very consistent artist. We don't talk about how consistent Snoop has been. And the reason when you, when you look at Snoop or another, our Snoop, so uh, doggy style drop with 92, 93, maybe 93, uh, uh, the chronic drop 92. When you have a, a rapper that came out with his first music in 92, 93, and, and how is this rapper still relevant and still making music in 2022? That's not by doing the same sound that he did in 92. That's that's evolving. That's, uh, you know, getting getting current sounds. Right, not doing the same thing, and then a lot of our artists from the, a lot of artists who were trailblazers in the '90s just stayed in one bag and didn't evolve, which is fine if you want to stay in that lane. But over time, as the next generation comes in, they're gonna want their heroes. They're gonna want their artist, and so you're gonna be the artist for the 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 fans that you know were you know your diehard supporters but then you know they're gonna have kids and then they're gonna have kids and the generation's going to change and new rappers are going to come up are these new rappers not supposed to get played they're never supposed to get played if that was the case we would have never heard pete rock ever using the pete rock logic we would have been playing or flex would have been playing grandmaster flash and curtis blow and never stop playing it Right, it never would have made made a way for the new rappers to come up in the '90s and leave it in in the late '80s because they would have still been playing the real hip hop, which would have been the original hip hop, and we talking about some of these early rappers. 
But then the 90s rappers came in because they were doing something different. There was a time when Curtis Blow was the hottest thing out. When LL was the hottest thing out. But then there were other rappers that came behind them. And Curtis Blow had his run. He had his run. And then quick, one day, he was played out. You know, according to the streets. And that started to that closed the door for Curtis Blow being the hottest thing. And then other rappers came up. Run DMC had their time. When they was the hottest thing out, everybody was trying to imitate Run DMC. And then ironically, Pete Rock gave Run DMC one of their last hits. Down with the King. We saw one of the early 90s, but it might have been about 93, 92, 93. And then it kept evolving. And then we had new rappers come. And we're always going to have new rappers come. But we have got to, our, 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 our legendary rappers have got to stop sounding like angry haters. Because there's a new crop coming in and doing the same thing that you did to somebody else. But a lot of our artists get mad. And they think that their time is supposed to last forever. And it can but it's not going to be the same way. You're going to have to do work and every DJ doesn't have to play your record. And when you say real hip hop, you say Funk Flex is not playing real hip hop. What does that even mean? That means if it ain't come from New York, then it ain't real. Like, are we back here again? Are we back here again? The arrogance of some of these rappers. A DJ can play what he wants to play. A DJ is going to play what the crowd is demanding. And when you have somebody like Funk Flex, in order for him to be in the position that he's in, there is a playlist. There is a playlist. That's how these, uh, uh, you know, commercial radio stations work. They sell airtime. And that airtime is based on a very, very simple formula. That air, the airtime that they, that they are, uh, uh, commercials that they're selling is based on what age group is listening to their radio station? And if they're trying to get a certain age group, a certain demographic, they're going to play certain kind of songs. And sometimes the underground rappers are not in that mix. And that's fine. You don't have to be in the mix. You don't have to be in the mix. There are other options. The internet has leveled the playing field. But a lot of artists don't want to truly leverage the internet i mean they want to spam you but that's not leveraging the internet that's not leveraging the internet and so uh we have a lot of folks that are complaining a lot of rappers complaining oh you ain't playing my record he he ain't playing real hip-hop which which just means he ain't playing new york hip-hop or he's not playing underground quote-unquote underground hip-hop well all the times the ladies don't want to hear that Right? The people want to hear what the people want to hear. If Funk Flex was playing songs that was not equaling ratings, he would be gone. He would have been gone. But he's around because, yeah, he's he's arrogant. He's, a, he's my Leo brother, right? So I already know how we can be as Leos, right? But you got to deal with him because he knows how to stay current with his playlist. And, and what he plays. And some of the rappers who complain about him now, you weren't complaining when he was playing your records in the 90s and in the, in the early 2000s. You wasn't complaining then. There was a whole lot of other rappers that weren't getting played then. And, and here's the thing. A lot of these artists are bringing out great music. And you know what? Funk Flex is probably not going to play it. That doesn't mean it's not good. That just means that he's in a lane that is younger, and and that is who he has to uh, uh, service based on the station that he's on. But there's a lot of there's there's a lot of choices for you artists that are, are not quote unquote mainstream making mainstream music, making more commercialized hip hop. There's there's there are plenty of lanes. Funk Flex is one lane, one lane. There, there's plenty of others. And so Funk Flex, I, I got to side with Funk Flex in this debate because as a DJ, he knows what he has to play. And what he has to play is different from what every artist may want 
you know, him to do because you want him to play your record, right? You want him to play your record. And your record can be good, and that doesn't mean, you know, it may not hit all the marks that that DJ wants. And you got certain DJs that are in a certain lane. So anyway, Conway the Machine called Funk Flex an out-of-touch gatekeeper. Now that's a uh that that's a uh that's that's a real real uh <laughs> a DJ don't like that. What up what up Terry T DJ Terry T um what are your thoughts Terry T Terry T on um I don't know real hip hop what do, what do you consider real hip hop? What does that even mean? And and I think it also I think it also depends on who you ask, right? You ask a 50-year-old what is real hip-hop, and you ask a 20-year-old what is real hip-hop, you will get two different answers. So as, as Funk Flex being on Hot 97, he is more geared to the 20-year-old. So is he supposed to play something that a 50-year-old would consider real hip-hop? No. That's going to get him fired so fast. That would get him fired so fast. You know what I mean? And um, so this beef, he, he was called an out-of-touch gatekeeper by Conway the Machine. So he's, he's a disgruntled rapper. And he's talented, right? But he's not going to make the records that Funk Flex is going to even be able to play, right? So he's speaking out of frustration. He's a talented artist, but he's going after a DJ that's not going to play his music. Because Conway the Machine is not going to make the records for the 20 year olds and nor should he, you don't have to. So flex doesn't like criticism. Okay. Most Leos, we don't like criticism. All right. So he is, has been going back at, at Pete rock and, and Conway. He says, you don't play real artists. No more. Pete rock said has deleted the comment, but it, it was on, um, uh, on Flex post of Conway's rant. You don't play real artists no more. So Pete Rock, a legend in his own right. Now you're gonna go diss, you want to diss artists that the new artists that Funk Flex plays called they're not real artists. Wait, so you're the only <laughs> you're the only <laughs> definer of real artists, Pete Rock. Come on now. I mean that's that ain't right. That 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 ain't right. That 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 ain't right. So he says that. And he says, you talk shit like you better than everybody. And I believe all threats with real talent in music were removed uh, by playing out the way for that new shit to happen. What are you talking about? Okay, he says, you a, a NY nigga treating other NY artists who put in the work like our career is over. You stop playing Wu-Tang. You played no Griselda, nothing. Stop playing a lot of artists. Then you judge MFs and make fun of the fact that you control what you want when you on air. Okay. A DJ, you know, it, it is, it, it's ironic. You know, you go to a party sometimes and DJs, you know, you know, you know how it is. We're DJing a party. And folks are telling us what to play sometimes. Play this, play that. And as a DJ, you say, oh, that's not going to work. Or you got a rapper that wants to rap on the mic and in the middle of the party. It's not going to work, right? People always want to tell the DJ. The, you know, you can't really tell the DJ how to rock the party. But they try to do it. And, and, and sometimes if you're paying the DJ and you want him to play this song, he'll be like, okay, I'll play it, right? It's not really what he wants to do, but he'll do it because you're paying him. And that's the secret here. Pain. You want a DJ to play something else, then usually you gotta you gotta pay them to do something, right? Otherwise, they're gonna do what comes natural to them. If I'm in a if I'm in a, a wedding reception or I'm at a family reunion, I'm gonna play music that is appropriate. I'm not gonna play real hip hop, quote unquote. Right? I'm gonna play whatever's appropriate based on the crowd. He's reading the crowd, and Funk Flex is reading his virtual crowd he knows who he's playing music for he knows how the bread is being buttered and what the playlist requires so he got a playlist and he's got to play songs that are on this playlist because the name of the game 
in commercial radio is selling commercials. It's not about playing real hip hop. A lot of times people get confused. That's not what it's about. It's never been about playing real hip hop. Underground artists get so upset and they got to understand the game. You got to understand the game. It's not the radio game, especially commercial radio, Hot 97, Power, you know, Power, whatever. It's not about the music more as much as it is about them selling commercials, selling commercials. And if your music is a is is a, is the type of music that's going to get people to turn the station, then that's not beneficial for the sale of commercials. So uh, Kermit says that it's a lot of underground artists that has radio type of songs and they still won't play. Common had a run of great radio songs in the 2000s and they got played. Okay. I like that comment, and and, uh, let's unpack that a little bit. So he said that there's a lot of underground artists that has radio type of songs that still won't get play. That is true. That is true. Now, it's not only that, you know, it's relationships, it's marketing, it's there's a lot of things that have to go into it. But when you have a song that's not being marketed, and and there is some behind-the-scenes stuff, the, the marketing and the promotions, you have you can have music that that's on uh, I don't know available online and people don't know about it and it's a good song you you ever stumble across something you know on your YouTube video a song will play before whatever you're trying to watch and you'll say that's nah, this all right what is what is this let me check this out you never even heard of the artist before there's a million like that right so how do you stand out from the pack right that that's called the marketing that's that is the job of whoever put you out whether it's the artist you have to market yourself just making a good song and thinking that a d a radio quote-unquote radio dj is just going to pick you from obscurity and play your songs no it's not gonna work like that they not they not trying to do all that work and it is a give and take right there's a give and take common had a, a great run of songs you're absolutely right and uh and i don't consider common to be an underground artist uh, but there, there are a lot of artists with great songs. Now, you have two ways that you can get your songs played or get or get in the, I don't know, get on the radar of a DJ, right? And, and it also depends on where you're trying to get it played at. You have to market your music. Now, you have the internet to market your music to the people. Now, people can force a DJ to play something by constantly requesting it. And you can get money and sell music online without, you can completely bypass the DJ. Because the radio ain't what it used to be. There used to be a time when there was, you know, a playlist, but the mix show DJs could play whatever they wanted to play. There was a time like that. But as the internet has grown and the power of commercial radio has shrunk, they started tightening it up and and they started having playlists for the mix show. Playlist for the mix show. That's when I said I gotta get I gotta get out of this because I, I like to play what I want to play. And I understand that. And I play what I want to play, but I'm not beholden to commercial radio. Somebody like Funk Flex is beholden to commercial radio, meaning he has to only play from a certain list of songs, a certain list of songs. Can't go out there. It doesn't matter that you had a good record. Such and such had a good record. If the, if they're not forcing him to play it, he don't have to play it. Now, if there's a song that he likes, will he break the record? Usually, yes. Yeah, there, there's times. Where, yeah, and, and there's been songs where DJs have had a, a, an invested interest in it and slammed it down people's throats. Yes, they, that that is true. But uh, that's not the, the you know... <laughs> That's very rare that that happens. And Funk Flex is one DJ, one DJ. And the power that he has now is not what it used to be. Now, he's still in that in that uh, lane for a reason because he has stayed true to what he's doing. And I know a lot of people don't like him. A lot of people don't like that uh, uh, playlist thing, which is why the Internet is so big. There used to be a thing called record stores. Internet put it out of business. The Internet is going to put commercial radio out of business one day it's going to happen 
right now in your town, if you turn on your FM radio, you may hear a whole bunch of uh, personalities that you don't even know who they are. They may not even live in your town. You know why? Because commercial radio is hurting so bad that they have to syndicate everything. You know, so they, they got one station that's that's being played in a couple of different cities. They're just bringing in somebody to work the boards and, and to turn the commercials on and off because the money's not there anymore. It's not popping like it used to be. So let's stop wasting our time begging DJs who are handicapped and, and handcuffed to a playlist to play your songs. You got other options. It's like we're in a new generation. We're in a new, we're in a new age. The internet is king. And so you got to use the internet. And that doesn't mean spamming somebody's uh, inbox, you know, please listen to my demo. That's not, you know, you got to put in, you got to put in work. You, you got, you've got to market yourself. You've got to market yourself. And we were real creative in the nineties. You had, like I said, you had street teams. You had folks going out and they you put on T-shirts. They would pass things out. You got you have got to do that version of it now, but use the internet. And you, you have to do that. And it's like I said, it's not just by spamming somebody's inbox. You got to be more creative than that. We put that creativity in the songs. We put that creativity in putting together the track. And you also have to put in creativity to digitally market your music. Don't beat up a DJ because he ain't playing your song. You can bypass him and go straight to the consumer from the internet. That's why the internet has put so many businesses out because it cuts out the middleman. We don't really need a record company anymore. If you put together your team, right? Because you can buy, it used to be we had to buy space on the shelves in the record stores. They were the gatekeepers. They out of here. The record stores are out of here and they used to be the main uh, obstacle between an artist getting their music to the fans. The record stores used to be that obstacle. The internet has destroyed them, and I'm glad to see them go. And I've owned and, and managed record stores, and I'm glad to see them go because it wasn't right the, the, the way that the record stores, especially the major chain stores, the way that they stood in the way of the artist and the music getting to the fans. Now that's gone. But you got to you have to do work. It's not like you know you don't have to do work. You have to do work. You have to market yourself and you have to get people to check out your stuff. And it's more than just, you know, uh hitting somebody up that you don't know or or pasting check out my music in the comment section. I mean, that's cool, but you got to do more than that. You have to do more than that. Otherwise, you're going to have great music get overlooked and that happens all the time too. It happens all the time. So whatever city you live in, I can guarantee you that the commercial radio station in your town are not playing predominantly rappers and singers from your city. They playing rappers and singers from somewhere else. That's how it is everywhere you go. I was in Dallas last week. It's the same way. It's the same way here in Baltimore. And, and you hear Pete Rock and a lot of other artists, uh, Conway, uh, the machine complaining about it in New York as well. Because it's 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 a program. It is it's almost fixed. It's, it's almost like saying that, that it's fixed. You know what I mean? And and that's just what it is. And you have to operate around it. You got to walk around it. So Pete Rock has produced records for, for Conway the Machine and has accused Funk Flex of looking down on artists. Sad. It, it it's it's sad that we have rappers and producers and DJs that are so talented that have now become bitter. That's a bad look. That's a bad look. He says so much good music out here. Uh, so much good music out here to be ignored as a black dude treating other black talented people like they beneath you. I just, I, I think he's, I, I think he's looking at this. Pete Rock is looking at this all wrong. But he, he continues, and, and Conway continues, you don't make beats or rap, but you shit on artists because you could, and you stop supporting real hip-hop music to cater to whoever got you in their pocket. 
That's sucker DJ behavior. So um uh that's um that that's some real <laughs> I won't say them fighting words, but he ain't like that. Nobody would like that. That is 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 saying that Funk Flex only pays what uh plays what he is paid to do. Now um there is has been a long talk about um you know they say payola. It's not payola per se. I mean, you can use that word, but if you if you walked up the radio station right now with a whole lot of money, do you think that that would make Funk Flex play your song? I would say no. On the radio, probably not. In the club, maybe. But on the radio, mm, I don't know. I don't know if he would even be able to do that because you're not on the playlist. Like they tighten this thing up. It's not like it used to be where where we could just slam on a record. You know, randomly, I remember uh, doing mixes uh, on commercial radio and, you know, after the program director is not listening, you know, and, and I would go to different stations, um, you know, not after weekends, Fridays, Saturdays, after 9 p.m. And we could play records that they would never be able to play during the week or when the program director was listening. Play all kind of records. What up, Frank? And um, could do that, but it is, it's not like it used to be. And I don't even know why you're worried about it. I don't even know why you're worried about it because most people don't listen to commercial radio. Most people don't even listen to commercial radio. The internet, social media, and the clubs is where you need to be and what you need to be worried about. Um, so Pete Rock also mentioned his own DJ career on Hot 97 and on BLS and said that he would play everybody's shit during his time there. If that is true, that's part of the problem, because he doesn't work there anymore. And and when's the last time you went to a party and they was like, yo, we got to have Pete Rock playing? I don't even know if that ever happened. So, you know, Flex had to go back and forth with him. And uh, uh, the thing about Flex is he, he knows how to go in on somebody. So, um... He's, he had his own uh, critique of Pete Rock. He says, I have watched this guy give his opinion of me for about two years. He's one of my favorite DJs, producers, and MCs. Funk Flex wrote, tagging Pete Rock on the post. I hope that some of our mutual friends will understand that Goofy has been but begging for smoke. Goofy. Oh, damn. Uh, Flex shared a screenshot of his response in the post, which went further into how he feels about Pete Rock. Coming from the guy who shitted on drill, wrote Flex. They fired you from WBLS and Hot 97 in that order because you lost touch with the music, the streets, and the club. Please remember, I'm a fan of your music. Love every song you ever made. Love listening to you on the radio and love your bars. He said, Pete Rock, you sit in your basement high as hell, out of touch, mad at the new generation. Pal, your career was over the day you stopped realizing hip hop can't be dictated. Yeah, I agree with all of that. Because here's, here's the thing, right? Uh, hip-hop evolves. It's a constantly moving thing. Just like the world is constantly spinning, it's constantly changing. So what was hot, I don't know, 20 years ago? More than that. I don't even know. When's the last time Pete Rock had a hit, right? More than that. So in the 90s, I mean, you know, it's going to continue to evolve. Right? It's going to continue to evolve. Uh, but there are a lot of, a lot of rappers that, Funk Flex could have added in this, and it applied to them, too. So he said Pete Rock was fired from WBLS and Hot 97 because he lost touch with music, the streets, and the club. I've seen a lot of, a lot of DJs go down like that. I've seen a lot of artists go down like that, too. Flex later accused Pete Rock of wishing he'd accept money in exchange for plays. He said... You wish I took money. 
make you feel better about your whack songs that you made in the last five years that I didn't play. Be clear, everything else you ever produced is amazing. I'm funny style to you, or you mad that we the same age and your career went a little, let's say, different than mine. You're right. I laugh like it's a joke. A lot of people like you haven't come to terms that there's a new style of artists controlling the craft. And that's it right there. That's it right there. I mean, that sums it up. A lot of people like you, he's referring to Pete Rock. There are a lot of rappers and DJs like this have not come to terms with the fact that there is a new style of artists that are controlling the craft. And ain't nothing wrong with that. Controlling the craft for a certain age group. And a lot of times, you got to understand that there are other people where you used to be, sitting in that slot, going out to the clubs every week. You know what I mean? Staying up all night with their friends. The 20-year-olds, the 25-year-olds. But some of these some of these rappers who are mad and complaining, their kids are the ones right now that that it's their you know moment. That doesn't mean that the forty the forty five year olds their moment is over. That just means that it is a, another generation on the stage, and we have got to let them be on the stage. And just because they on the stage doesn't mean you can't be on the stage. It's just not the same stage. And if Funk Flex, even though he's of the 90s generation, if he chooses to play in a lane for the younger crowd, that's his choice. Just like he played in that lane in the 90s when it was your and our age group in that lane. That's all it is. That's all it is. Frank, what are you talking about, young (laughs) GC? That was just random. Frankie on Instagram. Cool Frank 77 just randomly yells out Young Jeezy. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, you're trying to say, no, you ain't. Young Jeezy, this doesn't apply to Young Jeezy, if that's what you're saying. I, I don't agree with that. So, um, you know, music is one of those things. You're going to have artists that make songs for people their age, usually. That's usually how it goes. A 50-year-old, or I don't know, Pete Rock is probably older than that. How old is Pete Rock? Let's see. Let's see how old Pete Rock is. But uh a a I don't know, let's just say a 50 so okay, so he's 52. A 52-year-old is not going to make songs for a 20-year-old. You can't even if you try, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna happen. Y'all speak in different languages, they wear different clothes, it's, it's totally different. So for Pete Rock, for Pete Rock, who is an amazing producer and legendary, legendary, for him to accuse Funk Flex of not supporting real hip hop, Pete Rock, you're not a tastemaker. You think that real hip hop, quote unquote, is only one thing, which you do, and anything else ain't real. No, I call BS on that. I call BS on that. Real artist. Pete Rock's career launched as a New York radio DJ. Back in the day. Now he's made he he's made some uh he's made some good songs. He's made some good songs. And uh I can't take that away. But, you know, uh this hating, this disgruntled you know what I mean? This it's just I don't know. Flex just went in crazy. Told him to get off the drugs and the liquor and ask questions. Grown men grind. I was saying that earlier. Right? They, they got to work. Losers look at the next man's plate. Oh man, there are so many people that this applies to. Looking at the next man's plate. Well, there are uh, there's there's a lot of of artists that are in this. In this lane. And there's there's a lot of talented artists that don't get a look. But here's the thing. You're not entitled to anything. You've got to work. You've got to put in 
the work. You've got to market yourself online. Now, you can go directly to your fans because that's what it's about. Going to your fans. Finding fans. Establishing fan a fan base. And you can do that online and you don't need a DJ to do nothing. You can do that all online through music videos, through social media, through posting, through clips, through paid ads on social media. You can do that. Now, look, I can help people too. All right. So you can hire me for uh, consulting D, uh, DJ Diamond at gmail.com. But in all seriousness, it can be done. You do not have to beg a DJ to play your music. Not in 2022. You don't. These artists with with good songs, even if you got underground songs, whether you got radio songs or not, there's somebody that wants the music that you're making. You just don't have to depend on a DJ to get it to them. You can put in the work online yourself. You can do that. Now, if you want to sit back and say, no, the DJ is supposed to be playing my record. As many as many times that DJs play stuff that people that doesn't pop. So just because a DJ played it don't mean it's going to pop either. There's no one bullet, magic bullet that's just going to make you a star. You got to put in the work. Sometimes it's, it's a lot of work. Sometimes it's a little bit of work, but you got to put in the work. And if it's not, if you're not where you want to be right now, that means you got more work to do. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, at the Diamond K Show, of course, on fire-tv.com. Let me get this out the way. The Flywire and TFP Entertainment presents the 15th annual White Tie Affair Baltimore's biggest and most celebrated event, Sunday, July the 24th, 2022, 5 to 10 p.m. at Hammerjacks, the outdoor venue, 1300 Russell Street in Baltimore. After a two-year wait, the party of the year returns for another exceptional, fun, and elegant red carpet cocktail reception. The uh, Flower White Party is, you know, it is uh, legendary. Music this year. DJ Kibi, DJ Tons, Super DJ Big L. The attire is fly. It is sexy, all white. Venue is outdoors. Ladies, you got to wear the right shoes. Sneakers, sandals, wedges, and flats. Highly recommended. Don't do them heels. Wear those heels at your own risk. Not recommended. Tickets on sale right now. Hammerjacks.com. Party. It's the party of the year. <laughs> party of the year uh i'm going to be in the mix on saturday 6 p.m with um the on fire mix show for our all mix weekend uh mixing baltimore club music doing my thing all right and uh i'll be back i, I definitely will be interested to hear what people think about what i had to say too so uh let me know i, I you know i answer folks that people be talking great people be talking greasy too but uh, I definitely answer people. So uh, uh, let me know if you think I'm talking crazy. <laughs> uh, I definitely want to hear about it. On Fire TV is a streaming network for a generation on the move. 